In our next story, researchers sometimes describe cellular therapy as using the cell itself as medicine. Most immunotherapies attempt to activate T cells within the confines of the body, but a team here at UPMC is developing a unique type of immune therapy which activates T cells outside of the body, with encouraging results for patients now and exciting possibilities for future applications. Tonya Caruso has more. Deborah Miller was diagnosed with leiomyosarcoma in 2017. All right, so we're going to be in here to our right. This is room S. For me, it was, you can't control this, so you need to listen and do what they ask you to do and just take it one day at a time. After three rounds of chemotherapy and multiple surgeries, her cancer continued to spread. You are ready to get you hooked up. Okay. I was hoping we wouldn't have to get to this part, but here we are and this was the next step. This next step is a clinical trial focused on a unique type of adoptive cell transfer. We're predominantly focused in on a cell called a tumor infiltrating lymphocyte or a TIL cell. TIL have the ability to recognize and kill cancer cells but tumors can actually prevent these immune cells from working properly. The tumor is a really quite formidable foe. They, they've really developed unique strategies to either evade these cells or in some cases just starve them or, or kill them. The goal of adoptive cell transfer of TIL is to enhance what nature has already started. Instead of waiting for an immune system to be generated, they're actually installing an immune system. This is a very specialized form of cancer immunotherapy, but what makes it so unique is that we remove the immune cells from a patient's body. We activate them and grow them to incredibly large numbers, and we use those cells as the drug, as the treatment, so they get infused back into the patient as the primary therapy. By activating TIL cells ex vivo, they are free from the potentially suppressive tumor microenvironment. We typically grow up to 100 billion T cells. And in fact, it's really quite extraordinary that these cells, as I alluded to, that have such a tough time growing in the body, they grow like weeds outside the body. Once infused back into the patient, the TIL continue to multiply, recognizing and killing cancer cells. When you give billions of highly activated and in fact hungry T cells all at one time, we see tumor responses rather quickly. In addition to rapidity, other advantages include the ability to treat large volumes of tumors and to do so with specificity, resulting in very few off-target side effects. It also has the ability to reach elusive tumors. When you give a living, breathing cell into the bloodstream, they go wherever blood goes. And so we've not seen an obstacle even with tumors in, in a tiny nook or crevice. These advantages are particularly relevant for metastasis of solid tumors. And they've been the types of cancers that have been so hard to cure with conventional therapies. When I first started this journey, there were no clinical trials for this type of cancer because it's kind of rare. I, I pray every night that, you know, there's some kind of breakthrough. Um, something and then this happened, so. The multi-step process of TIL therapy begins with the excision of a small tumor sample. It's minced into one millimeter fragments, then put into a culture dish with nutrients necessary for the lymphocytes to grow. And we wait, and by the end of two weeks, they're really teeming populations of cells. Now, what makes our group very different than, say, other research groups is that we interrogate the activity at this point. By interrogating the cells, they can select TIL with significant personalized anti-tumor reactivity. We pick the cream of the crop, and then we expand those for ultimately patient delivery. Dr. Kumula's technique of expanding TIL requires a small sampling of white blood cells from the patient. They'll be used as supporting or feeder cells in the culture process. Um, it's not painful at all, okay. no pain. The feeder cells are obtained through this process called leukapheresis. The patient's blood passes through a machine that takes out the white blood cells, then returns all the other blood cells and plasma back into the bloodstream. 
Hi. How are you? I'm good. Later, the large-scale expansion of Mrs. Miller's till cells will be done at a good manufacturing practices facility located on site at UPMC Hillman Cancer Center. This is a very important fundamental asset. There are not very many centers around the country or the world that are really conducting these types of studies. While the till are expanding at the GMP facility, a process which takes several weeks, Mrs. Miller will be given a regimen of lymphodepleting chemotherapy. It will transiently wipe out her immune system so that it can be built back up again with till cells. When I explain this to patients in the office, they take a second look and say, wait a minute, you're gonna boost my immune system by wiping it out. And the answer is yes. And the analogy I like to give is that if your computer has a virus or malware and you just can't fix it, sometimes the best thing to do is to wipe the hard drive clean and start over. Reboot the immune system is what I tell patients. Once the chemotherapy regimen is complete, the patient receives an intravenous infusion of expanded till. And we literally can see these tumors shrinking before they leave the hospital at the end of a week. And if they do continue to show regression, we don't do anything. We, we know that we've implanted these seeds. We let them do their job. In fact, trials in cutaneous melanoma show a response rate of over 50%, with a long-term complete response rate of about 25%. Based upon these results, Dr. Kamula's team is developing TIL therapy for hard-to-treat cancers, such as pancreatic cancer, mesothelioma, and uveal melanoma, and they're seeing encouraging results. This is the same patient before and after with a thousand tumors and after our till treatment you, you'll see his liver is nearly free of cancer. I mean this is what we're trying to do here. The research is now studying whether this therapy is going to be effective for different types of cancer and they're exploring ways in which bioengineering and gene therapy can be used to improve the process particularly when a cancer does not trigger the immune response necessary to isolate good T cells. Our ultimate goal is to learn as much as we can from these natural cells and how they work. So I think the trap is to just try many things without a template. And we think that TIL are really the ultimate guide in how we're going about genetically engineering cells. Then potentially we can manufacture a cell that a patient may not have to begin with. In essence, giving patients what nature didn't. The next stop for Deborah Miller's white blood cells is expansion at the GMP facility. And in several weeks, the results will be returned to her in an infusion that represents the frontier of truly personalized medicine. Every single day I come to work is an exciting day because as I tell the people in the lab, we're doing things that no one has ever done before. Okay, thanks ladies. And you have the original copies right here. Thanks. I think it's going to be neat no matter what my outcome is. So if this is the way, okay, so be it. I'm going to be as joyful and pleasant as I can until the end comes. And if somebody can benefit from, you know, this type of research that's being done on me, then I'm, I'm, I'm happy for that.